Hey, good morning. It's Wednesday, and I appreciate all of you who take a few minutes to check in with me. We call it Coffee with PC, and that's because I usually bring my cup of coffee with me. I got a cup of my uh, single, uh, what do you call it, uh, the pod brewer that we have, um, Lore Pod Brewer. Quite nice. Uh, little mild, ro excuse me, medium roast today to get my day going. I hope your day is off to a good start and your week is going well. Uh, just checking in with you and what we've been doing for a while is wandering through the book of Matthew. And right now we're in the middle of a parable of Jesus that Matthew records for us. It's in Matthew chapter 13 and it's been called a lot of things. Typically I hear it called the parable of the sower. If you were with us last week, you know we started talking about this. Uh, because it's really kind of an involved analogy uh, that Jesus uses. I don't know if analogy is a word that, that resonates, but a parable is, is a story Jesus tells using everyday kind of ordinary circumstances to make a spiritual point. And he does it here by using the everyday ordinary circumstance and story of a farmer going out to plant seed. And that day, you know, farmers planted seed in sort of a, a, a sowing, scattering motion. We might have a more particular thing with rows and, and all of that sort of thing, but they would just have their field that would be prepared and they would just scatter the seed. And when they did that, the seed would fall, according to the parable, into different types of soil. Some would fall on the path, some would fall in rocky soil and some would fall among thorns and then some would fall in the good soil and each of the different types of soils would produce a different kind of result and that's the point that jesus those those soils i should say are what jesus is going to use to make his point now we said last week but just a quick kind of reminder in case you weren't with us last week when we started talking about this um the, the two big pictures here are the seed as an image of the message of the kingdom, Jesus says, the, uh, the words and the message that Jesus himself came to preach. But more than that, Jesus as the message, his life, his death, his resurrection, as the way for people to be reconciled, to be made right with God. That's the message of the kingdom that he came preaching and he came securing by his death. And so the seed in this story represents the message going out. And then the message that goes out, the message of the kingdom lands in different kinds of soil and that's about our hearts people's hearts their receptivity to the message of the kingdom and jesus uses the analogy of seed and soil to make that point and then what we said and is particularly great about this one is he explains what he means so last week we talked about the first of the different places the soils as it were where the seed fell on the path where the falls on the path and it can't penetrate so the birds come along and they eat the seed and it never gets to grow and jesus said that seed is like a hard heart that the word doesn't penetrate and the enemy the devil sneaks it away before it can ever uh, germinate before it can ever grow before it can ever have any effect and so we talked about that last week today we want to talk about the second of the soils it's called the rocky soil here's jesus's explanation some fell among the rocky soil, he says. The, the, the one who received the seed that fell among the thorns, or excuse me, I, I need to back up. We'll do that next week. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. And then verse 21, but since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. So this is the second of the soils, the soil, or the seed that fell among rocky places. Again, this is about the human heart. This is, the question is, what is the, the human equivalent, we might say, of the rocky soil? And Jesus describes it as the person who receives, who hears the words of the, the message of the kingdom or the teaching of Jesus and is excited about it, but it doesn't last. It starts off really good, but it goes away quickly. Um, and, and he says, particularly, it doesn't have any root. And so when trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. In the picture of the plant, the plant pops up because the roots don't go very deep, shoots up, and as soon as, as, as the difficulties of the sun and all that, the heat of the day, it just wilts right over. That's the picture he uses. Now, now what does that mean for us? Well, well I'm going to tell a parable about a parable. <laughs> Maybe that's kind of weird, but, but let me do it this way because I, I thought about this and I was trying to say, as I'm trying to help uh, 
make this clearer, I realize that one of the weaknesses of a first century Near Eastern agrarian parable is we are not first century ancient Near Eastern agrarian people. We don't live by farming pretty much. Oh, we have gardens, we might have plants and flowers in our yard. Um, but as a rule, our livelihood doesn't depend on sowing seed and a crop that comes up. So some of these analogies, maybe we don't relate to as much as the people in the ancient Near East, the people that heard this, that lived that kind of lifestyle. So that's why I say I'm gonna say a parable about a parable. Let me use an illustration that maybe we can relate to a little differently to see if we can understand the kind of thing that Jesus is getting at. And here's the, the kind of the analogy, the illustration, the parable of the parable, New Year's resolutions. Now think about this. Um, New Year's come, we're, we're, I know it's, it's April, so we're a fourth of the way, almost a third of the way through 2024. Hard to believe how fast time goes, that's another story. But around the new year, um, a lot of us get excited about things and we decide we want to make some resolutions, probably because there's some changes we wanna make. We, we have some goals for the new year. And maybe we make formal resolutions or informal resolutions or just kind of hope that we'll change some things. Probably one of the most popular it has to do with I'm going to eat better and exercise regularly. I'm going to watch what I eat and I'm going to exercise regularly. I'm going to try to, to be healthier in those ways in the new year. And when that happens, um, for me, I can tell you my experience, it usually goes like this because of the holidays, because of my anniversary that comes after Christmas and my birthday that comes after Christmas and all the celebrating that goes on around the Christmas holidays. By the time the new year starts, I'm, I'm over all the rich food, the heavy food, the desserts, and, and, and all that sort of thing. And I'm like, you know what? I'm looking forward to just a simple, nice meal, something not heavy, something not fatty, no dessert, just to, to, to get back to those sort of things. So it's, it's easy to start out, and I'm excited about it. The first day that, that we just grill a chicken breast on the grill or, or, or saute it up and make some, some broccoli with it, and I'm like, brown rice, oh yes, this is wonderful. I, I'm so, the heaviness of all, but, and, it, and it's great, and I eat it. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do better. I like to go running or jogging or whatever you call what I do. And so in the new year, I might have a plan, I might get a training plan. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to train for this race, this distance. I'm gonna try to run further or run faster than I ever have. And so the first few days of the year, you hit it hard because you're excited about it. But what happens? Well, a lot of things can happen. What happens is life happens. You know, uh, as you're going along, let's say you're trying to, to, to not eat desserts, you're trying to watch what you eat, eat healthier. And then in your office or in your family is a birthday and they have, chocolate cake and ice cream, and cake and ice cream is your favorite. You go, it's a birthday. I shouldn't, I don't wanna insult them by not eating the birthday cake, right? So I'm gonna have some cake and ice cream because I wanna celebrate. This is a big day for my, my family member, or my, my office mate, or wherever it happens. And so you, you indulge a little bit. Uh, well, not, you know, nothing wrong with that. I'll do better tomorrow. Uh, or, or maybe as you're, you're, you're exercising, like, like me, I'm, I'm going to run further. I'm going to run faster. And so I go out and I push myself a little too hard. And the next day I wake up and boy, am I sore. Maybe, maybe I, I, I pulled something or twisted something. Or maybe it's just, I'm just tired because I've overworked the muscle. You know what? I, I need to take a day or two off. I need to slow down. And then what happens is that oh, I'm just gonna have this birthday cake and ice cream at the party, or I'm, I'm not gonna run today, or I'm not gonna work out today because I'm a little sore, becomes two days, becomes another piece of cake, and becomes another scoop of ice cream, and becomes another day not exercising. And before you know it, it's April uh, 10th, and you haven't done any of it. You've been eating the, the worst you ever have, and you haven't done any exercise for a month and a half. We understand how that goes, right? The initial excitement but just the pressures of life, oh, before you know it, you just sag back into your old routine. And I, I, I think for me that helps understand a little bit, and maybe it does for you too, what Jesus is saying about the rocky soil. Notice what he said, that, that the man who hears the word receives it with joy. There, there's excitement. Oh, I have heard this. That, this is great. I'm excited about it. I'm going I'm gonna, to I'm gonna follow Jesus. Jesus loved me. He died for me. I want to I wanna be his disciple. I'm going to go to church, and I'm going to read my Bible, and I'm going to pray. I'm going to do all these things. And, and then life happens. And, and maybe because you're very busy, maybe there's, there's a special project you're working on, or, or you're going to travel, or, or who knows what happens. Uh, you know, it's, oh, wow, I, I realized I forgot to read my Bible today. Oh, I didn't, I didn't pray today. 
and then it's been two days, and then it's been three days, and then it's been a week, and then it's been a couple of weeks. And all of that excitement of following Jesus just kind of just kind of dampens down. Or maybe maybe it's it's not he also says that not just from from that sort of thing, but from trouble or persecution because of the word. So so maybe you have this new uh, found faith in Jesus. You're excited. You're going to renew your commitment or you're, you're going to be a new believer. Maybe you're going to be baptized like we baptize on Easter Sunday. You say, hey, I want you to come. I'm going to be baptized. Oh, you got religion. Are you a Jesus freak now? And, and, and then maybe the, the friends or the, the acquaintances or even the family members begin to, to, to kind of rib you a little and poke you a little and, and, and tease you a little. And you think, wow, I mean, I thought they would be happy for me. Why are they giving me such a hard time? Maybe you you start making changes and, and you used to go out and do this with your friends and they say, hey, we're going to go out. And you say, you know what? Um, I, I, I'm not going to go this time. And they're like, oh, what's wrong with you, you old fuddy-duddy? And you say, oh, before you know it, you're back into your old habits. And all of that excitement initially just kind of wanes down. I think that's something close to what Jesus is getting at. That sometimes in faith we, we hear a word of the kingdom, the message of the kingdom. We get really excited about it but with just a little bit of pressure, a little bit of struggle, a little bit of the demands of life, a little bit of, of, of trouble or persecution because of what we're trying to do, and, and we realize, eh, never mind, and we're back to our old habits. Um, following Jesus, I say this a lot, I guess it bears repeating here, is not a guaranteed ticket that everything's going to be great and life is going to be easy and you're not going to have any problems. Becoming a follower of Jesus, becoming a Christian, guarantees none of that. And sometimes it brings with it problems we don't anticipate as we try to learn to follow. And Jesus says, if our heart is like rocky soil, while we might want to be excited about it at first, if we don't get any roots down, it doesn't take much just to wilt that plant over and nothing comes from it. So, so I will tell you, sometimes following Jesus is the hardest thing you'll ever do. But can I also tell you, I've learned through some very difficult times in my own life. And I think a lot of people that have been following Jesus for a while would tell you this. Though it's hard, looking back, even the struggles, they're worth it. There are so many blessings. Right? Maybe that word doesn't mean a lot. Maybe it's kind of an empty word, but I don't know what other word to use. There are so many positives. Is that a different word? There are so many ways that I see the presence of Jesus, the encouragement of Jesus, the, the fellowship and the friendship I find with others who follow him, that even when it's difficult, even when it's hard, and it takes effort to find time in a busy schedule or to slough off the woes that kind of look down their nose or think, you know, maybe you'll, you'll get over this phase of your life soon, and to, to maybe even disappoint people you know and, and, and your friends because you're making new commitments. It's worth all of those things. You know, one of the things Jesus says when he talks about becoming a Christian, as we put it, he says, if anyone would come after me, follow me, he must first deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. When you think about just that, deny yourself, like what I want, what my dreams, my goals, my hopes, my wants. I'm going to put those aside in favor of what God wants. And, and take up your cross, the cross, an instrument in that day of torture and execution, to die to your own desires, to die to self, to follow Jesus. Yeah, that's not a road that sounds like an easy road. But ultimately, we find when we allow those roots to grow down deep, into our life, that when the persecution and trouble comes because of those deep roots and because of the presence of Jesus and the promises he makes to us, we find it's worth it to endure and to grow in him. So those are my encouragements for you this morning. A little bit of a warning to be careful about that initial excitement. Yes, sometimes the message of the kingdom is great news and we want to jump in, but, but just be ready. Because while there are times of great joy and, and, and there's times where you feel like you're on top of the world, there are also difficult times. And we need to make sure those roots are down deep so that we can last through that difficulty. Um, 
We're going to pick up with the rest of this parable next time. We'll talk about the, the thorns, the, the soil that has thorns in it. And, and then finally, we'll talk about the good soil. I don't know if we'll do that both next time or, or two weeks. I'm not sure. I'll let you know. You have to tune in next week and figure it out. But until then, always want to encourage you to join us if you're able for our Sunday morning time of worship. 9 a.m. is when we get together and worship. I love to have you join us if you're here in Key Largo. Come on down to our church, Mile Marker 99. We also stream our services online. I know we've had some issues with that. We're working on the technology behind the scenes. We're working on um, getting a new provider, a new software installed that we hope will make a big difference in how our streaming will go. So please be patient with us and, and hopefully we'll get that up and running soon. But if you're able to be in person, that's all the better. We'd love to have you here. Uh, if there's anything you have for me, a question you have, a prayer request you have, just something you wanna communicate, feel free to do that. Either if you're watching on Facebook, you can drop me a note there. You can send me uh, an email through our, our church website. Our, my email is on there, fbckl at terranova.net. You can do all that. It, it's linked on there. Please let me know. I'd love the chance to talk with you, to pray with you, and to help you maybe understand more about what it means to follow Jesus and why I found it's worth it, even with the trouble, even with the difficulty that sometimes comes. So I will leave you with that. I have two sips left. I'm going to savor every bit of them, and then I'm going to get back preparing for the study tonight. So until next time, whether Sunday or next Wednesday, have a great one.